watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Oh, baby! Oh, baby! Ah! Say something, one, two, three! Out of here, boy. They, they've been through this before. They know what it's like. Sit back and watch the show. Going deep runs, uh, years behind us to help us in this game, and we trust that they're going to be ready. What a, what a tremendous opponent! Pull up a chair, sit back and watch the show. They're undefeated, so they have the skills and stuff. They're big and physical. Confront them with being big and physical. Uh, we know it's going to be a great challenge, and go up there and, and uh, cut it loose and see what happens. Sit back and watch. Oh yeah, the search for a spot in the Circle City coming full circle tonight. Semi-state action all across Indiana. You win and you're playing for a state title next week down at Lucas Oil Stadium. East Noble, Eastbrook, Adams Central, all hoping to make plans for a post-Thanksgiving pilgrimage to the promised land. Dwenger, well, they were there last year. And after winning the 4A state title, the big question was could they make it back to Indy now that they're up in 5A? Undefeated in second-ranked Valparaiso, the final hurdle for the Saints as Andy McDonald spent his night at Viking Field over in Valpo, and he joins us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Thanks, Glenn. The road back to Lucas Oil Stadium for Bishop Dwenger comes up just a stop short. The Saints, they were upended by a physical Valpo team in Class 5A semi-state, 10-7, the final. The defending 4A state champs Bishop Dwenger over in Valparaiso taking on the undefeated Vikings. Valpo asserts their wheel on the ground on the very first drive of the game. Six and a half minute drive leads the Tommy Burby touchdown 7-0 in favor of the Vikings. This Valpo defense also led by Cooper Jones, the junior, already has offers from Michigan and Ohio State stymies that Saints offense and it leads to the punt and on the other end of this, the Vikings, Antonio Orcio gets it and eludes a few tackles and gets down deep inside Saints territory, leading to a Viking field goal. Valpo takes a 10-zip lead just before the end of the first half over Bishop Dwenger. Dwenger trying to find something offensively with just a few minutes to go, but Brendan Lytle's pass it's picked off by the Vikings. It floats in the air, and it's 10-zip going into the break. No quit in this Saints team, though, coming out in the second half after forcing a punt. This time, it's a miscue. Griffin Eifert bobbles it, and the Vikings, they jump on it in the bottom of the pile to come up with a clutch turnover for Valpo. But the Saints defense, they are up to the challenge. This time, it's John Michael Fabini stepping in front of the slant pattern to give the ball right back to this Bishop Dwenger offense. Move to the fourth quarter, still 10-0 in favor of Valpo until a 99-yard drive. Brendan Lytle finds Patrick Finley, his favorite target. A defender falls down Finley finds his way into the end zone and they are just back in this 10-7 in favor of Valpo still late in the fourth quarter. Saints get the ball back with about three to play and their last chance Lytle eludes the defender but his pass deflected midair and it drops helplessly as Valpo takes over on downs. The Vikings take down the Saints in a thriller 10-7 the final. You fought till the very end. Kind of what what was this game about and, and, and how did you guys come up short? It was a physical game, you know. It came down to the answers, you know. One mistake here, one mistake there. That's what decided this game. They had mistakes, we made mistakes. It was capitalizing on those and see what we could do again. Earlier today, they capitalized on more mistakes than we did. Uh, last year, you guys were state champs. This year, you're just a, a step short. But what kind of characterizes this team? You know, we never give up. You know, we love each other. We still get there at the very end. Never gave up on each other. We trusted each other. You know, we played our best. We played a great game. We're a great team. Well, early on, I'll tell you what, uh, they got a great squad, and it was everything that we thought it was going to be and more. Um, took a hard shot there in the beginning, and uh, our guys responded. And they're, they're defined by resiliency and trust and unity, and we made critical adjustments. Hats off to our defense. Made some offensive adjustments at halftime. Uh, put ourselves in a position to have a chance, and uh, that's all you ask for in a game like this. A couple heavyweights going at it, and uh, you know we just came up a little short. A few things didn't go our way, and uh, that's what games like this come down to. We've been on the other side of this many times, and uh, 
you know, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll chew on this one for a while, but uh, love these guys and so thankful and humbled to be their coach. The Saints, they finish out the year 11-2 and two on the year, while the Vikings, they move on to the Class 5A state title game against New Pal. From Valparaiso, Indiana, I'm Andy McDonald, Wayne 15. John Harrell's had Dwinger as a three touchdown, a 21-point underdog coming into this game to so to play Valpo within three points. Not a shabby effort by any means by the Saints. Hey, we're going to take a quick timeout, but when we get back at it, we're going to head up to Kendall, Vegas, where it was rocking the night. East Noble looking to punch its ticket to the state title game. We got complete coverage of the Knights versus Hobart in 2A. Will Eastbrook be heading back to Lucas Oil Stadium this season and in 1A Adams Central coming off that big upset of South Adams last week. Could they keep it going on the road against a perennial powerhouse? We're talking 4A, 2A and 1A semi-state. It's all coming up next on The Zone. Wood, the Indiana Pacers and Indiana Fever proud to support Indiana's team at our level. Watch us Knights run through the bricky wall, and the highlight zone is back. Well, it has been a while since the folks in Kendallville have had a game this big to cheer about. That was up there in Kendallville, and they came out in droves. Last time East Noble hosted semi-state, 2003, with the Knights beating Bishop Dwanger that night, 42-28 to advance to the RCA Dome to play Ron Colley for the 40 state championship. Will the Knights make another trip to Indy while well, standing in the way of the Hobart Brickies? First quarter, oh, it didn't look like it was going to turn out too well. East Noble's punt is blocked. This led to a Brickies field goal. It was three zip early, and East Noble just couldn't get out of its own way in the first quarter. Bailey Parker, a rare interception by Hobart. And on the ensuing drive, you're going to see the Brickies punch it in. And just like that, it's 10-0 Brickies. Second quarter, you know what? East Noble still can't get out of its own way. So uncharacteristic of this East Noble team. It's a pick six by Matthew Benton. And Hobart up 17-0 early in the second quarter. But East Noble showing the intestinal fortitude. This is Justin Marcellus from three yards out. That makes it a 17-7 game in the second quarter. Then late in the second quarter, it's Joe Painter. And you better believe Painter with a masterpiece. It's a 30-yard field goal. And that makes it just a 17-10 game at the half, considering how bad East Noble played in that first quarter. Kind of a nice rally in that second quarter. Third quarter, how about Bailey Parker for the keeper? He's been doing it all year long. That ties it at 17 all. Fourth quarter, 10 minutes to go. East Noble's defense bending and breaking Hobart. We're talking a safety. East Noble takes the lead on that play, 19-17. Then it's Parker doing what he does for a touchdown. East Noble up 26-17. Now, Hobart would add a 71-yard touchdown play to cut it to 26-24, but Painter again with the beautiful boot. It's a 29-24 lead with about two and a half minutes to go. Final play. Hobart looking for a touchdown, and guess what? It's not going to happen. That's Hayden Jones knocking it down at the goal line, and East Noble is heading to the state championship game. The Knights go into state for the first time since 2003 as East Noble comes back to beat Hobart 29-24. Oh, it was a great atmosphere. You know, the, town, all, the whole town came out, you know, um, our, my players had my back when I had a hard first half. And, you know, it's just a great experience, you know, finishing the game out strong and coming out with the win and going down to Indy with my, my best friends, and I love them all to death. You know, we shot ourselves in the foot a little bit, made some mistakes, and a lot of credit to an awesome Hobart team that came in ready to play. You know, got off the bus after three hours, and they were ready to play. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough team, and I have a lot of respect for that program. But, yeah, we're just... You know, our kids never stopped fighting. Our kids uh, battled, made plays, big-time plays when we needed to. Came from all over. We, you know, we were able to run the ball, able to throw the ball, play great defense. I'm just, I couldn't be, I couldn't be more proud of this whole community. Like everybody that was here tonight, witnessed what it's like in Kendallville when uh, when it's going. And uh, this was awesome. This is a dream, this is a dream come true. Well, you're going to state. How's that feel, man? Oh, it feels awesome, man. I love, I love all my brothers, and you know, it's the greatest feeling in the world. 
East Noble rallying like the champion it is. Second rank East Noble now takes on third rank Evansville Memorial, 3.30 next Saturday in Indy. You can bet all of Kendall Vegas is going to be there. A 2A Eastbrook. They made the state title game last year. Panthers looking to head to Lucas Oil Stadium yet again as they were hosting Andrean. Andrean third and goal in the first quarter. We pick it up here when Noah Hamilton to Nicholas Flesher in the 59ers on the nine yard touchdown strike. Take a seven zip lead at Eastbrook and you can bet that wouldn't sit well with Jeff Adamson and company. Later in the first, East Noble, or excuse me, Eastbrook doing what Eastbrook does. Isaiah Dalton. 69 yards on the touchdown scamper. This kid is having one heck of a postseason. That ties it at seven all. Second quarter. Watch this play. You're gonna see Andre completed, but the fumble just kind of lays the ball on the turf. And guess who's Johnny on the spot? It's Isaiah Dalton. He takes it all the way back for six, and Eastbrook takes its lead 14 to 7. And uh, they weren't done. It's Dalton again as Eastbrook beats Andrean 26-14. Eastbrook advances to the state championship game where they get Western Boone. That's the second year in a row those two teams will meet for a state championship. In 1A, Adam Central back at semi-state for the second year in a row. The Jets making the drive to face perennial powerhouse Lafayette Central Catholic. Michael Moser and company looking for a dub, but uh, it was a rough start for AC. The snap over Blake Hirely's head. The sophomore with a heads-up play. He would get it out of the end zone to avoid the safety, but on the very next play, maybe it didn't turn out so fortuitous, Evan Munn punches it in for the touchdown, and LCC up 7-0. Tough to make mistakes at their place. Joaquin Gallo will then boot one through for LCC, and AC down 10-0. Second quarter, Dallas Schwaller looking, looking, and he would be picked off by Kyle Onken, and later, on the ensuing drive, it's Reese Bushy. You're gonna see this kid go across the middle, pick up a big game. Matter of fact, he goes 59 yards on this into AC territory inside the red zone. Later, you're gonna see Clark Barrett hook up with Bushy for a touchdown and Adam Central season comes to an end. They end 12 and two, that's their record overall as they fall at LCC 24 to 14 tonight. We've got more Highlight Zone coming up, including your gem of the night after the break. It's basketball season. Stay tuned for more Highlight Zone. Your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem of the night. We got to go back up to Kendallville. The whole defensive line getting it done for East Noble. The safety in the fourth quarter gave East Noble their first lead of the game. They would not look back. East Noble is heading to the state championship game in 4A with a win over the Brickies, 29-24. That is your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem of the night. So what does next week look like? Well, the even number games are going to be on Saturday at Lucas Oil Stadium at noon. It's Eastbrook battling Western Boone. Uh, Weibo actually beat Eastbrook 34-20 last fall at State. That's again at noon and then in 4A. Second ranked East Noble, number three Evansville Memorial kick at 3.30. We'll be down there providing you complete coverage from Lucas Oil Stadium next Saturday. In Hoops News, we're talking actually Comets first. The K's battling rival Toledo and in the first period things get a little bit chippy and then they get a little bit weird. Dylan Ferguson can't really handle that one in between the pipes. It goes in. TJ Hensick credited with the goal and that was kind of how this evening went. Another fluke goal in the first quarter, first period as the Comets do fall at home by a final of 6-2 to Toledo. Moving on to some hoops action. We're talking about the Mad Ants looking for win number one. They started 0-5. Would it be 0-6? Well, Stephen Hicks gets the two there. He had 12. Then it's Siobhan Mooring popping. He had 13, but the Mad Ants lose 111 to 96. They're now 0-6 on the season. They host the Windy City Bulls on Sunday. How about this one? Mastodon's basketball. Don's with a shot at a big time win against a Big Ten opponent. 10th ranked Ohio State. First half, Dwan, Dwayne Washington Jr. with the three, but Demarcus Berry had the answer on the other end. He had 16 points to lead the Dons. It wouldn't be enough. All-American candidate Caleb Weston with the little hook right there as the Dons fall 85-46. Dons back home Sunday at 3 o'clock against Ohio Northern. 
One of the top girls matchups so far this season on paper, 4A number 2 Homestead, 3A number 12 Concordia, Sydney Graber, and one. Graber led everybody with 24 points. How about Riley Parker, the future PFW Mastodon, buries it. And then you're going to see Grace Sullivan going to play a much bigger role this season for Homestead, popping one in. Annika Nelson would get a bucket here for Concordia, but Homestead just too good. The Spartans win this one 73-29 at the cage. Staying in the SAC, Carroll coming in 3-0, ranked 14th in the latest 4A state poll. Chargers had a solid Northwood, uh, battling a solid Northwood team. That was Jasmine Anderson with two of her 10. Carroll up by four in the first quarter. Second quarter, Ja'Asia Scott would lay one in. Scott had 12 for the ladies in orange, but Olivia Hepner is off to a fantastic start this season. You're going to see Hepner finish the break here. She had 25 points to lead everybody as Carroll continues an impressive start to the season with a 77-46 win. Southside, as always, the Archers should be in the hunt for a conference title in the SAC. Juanita Goodwell and company at Wayne. It's Wayne's Amelia Diaz. You saw her put it up, and then Southside goes the other way. There is a bucket by the fantastic sophomore, Olivia Smith. And then J.C. Jones is going to push this one here. Jones is going to play her college basketball at Detroit Mercy. Good look right there to Smith again at Southside. Wins this one by 60, 82 to 22. In the NECC, perennial title contender Angola at 4-0 east side. Angola looking good here. Kayla Fenstermaker with the pilfer and a head to Hannah Noel. Noel with 21 points to lead all scores. Angola with a four-point lead early on. Allie King with the jumper there for east side. That was the first field goal for the Blazers in this one. Off the rebound, you're going to see King do it again. But on the other end, Allie Lortz would nail a triple for Brandon Apgood's team as Angola goes into east side and wins it by 20, 38 to 28. Our last stop tonight, we're talking about a county rivalry game. Garrett at the Cal, Railroaders 3-0, ranked 15th in the state in 3-8. Third quarter, Natalie Armstrong, nice dish to Morgan Ostrowski for the layup. Garrett up 41-16. The Cal trying to chip away. Morgan Leslie gets the wide open three to put three more on the board for Garrett. But Garrett off to a great start this year. Bailey Kellum. Nobody stops the ball. It's a layup for Garrett as Garrett goes on to win over county rival DeKalb by a final of 59 to 32. So back to football. East Noble heading to the 4A state championship game. Eastbrook heading to the 2A state championship game. Both those games at Lucas Oil Stadium next Saturday. And we will be there with complete coverage as we get you ready for the state championship games next week right here on Wayne TV. See you then.